Let me let you in on a little secret. You don't hate your job. You hate the fact that you go work 40, 50, 60 hours, you get your paycheck and it's gone because you're using your active income that you go and invest all this time, energy and effort into to pay for your liabilities and your lifestyle. My wife and I recently had to get new vehicles over the last six months. And I went and bought a fourplex before I bought my car. I went and got a duplex before we got hers because I'm always gonna acquire more assets to pay for liabilities specifically. I, I actually despise having to go and create active income to pay bills. So I just give you that as a little bit of insight. It's not that you hate your job, you hate that you use your money to have to pay for that lifestyle and the only way that you earn it again is going back to that job to do it. What my boy said is spot on. I mean, I've said this millions of times over, is when you have a job, and I'm not going to even get on a point. Alex, you can hit the point of liking your job. But the part I'm going to focus on is when he said, do not use active income to pay bills. Do not act, use active income to fund your lifestyle. I've always had this mindset. I mean, once I start learning finances is it, whatever I want, I want somebody else to pay for it. So instead of buying a car, and I've done the same thing that this gentleman's done, but instead of buying a car, I will get my money up and I will go buy an asset that will pay for the car. If I want to go on vacation and I got plans on going, let's say three vacations a year, I'm going to buy assets that's going to fund it. I'm not going to go punch a clock and got to slave and work days in, days out, just so I can fund this trip and then I got to go work again to fund the next trip, work again to fund the next trip. Because the only way, I, and because I, I don't even really get to enjoy the trip. The only thing is, is I fund the trip and then, all right, now I got to think of oh, how many more hours I got to work to fund the next one. Or how much money I'm going to have after paying for this trip to even enjoy the trip. It always becomes a financial burden when you have to actively work to fund these things. So... All the time. I mean, Alex, you hear me saying it all the time. But like, oh, I got to get a car. Okay, well, let me go see what who's going to pay for it. I'd rather other people work and they use their active income to pay me to fund the endeavors I have. Because I damn sure ain't about to go out there and do it. It's the craziest thing ever. I mean, some people laugh about my food bill. I don't pay my food bill. Other people pay for it. I mean, that's just how it is. I mean, my lights, gas, phone, water, all this other stuff, other people pay for it. Not me. I'm not going to punch that clock to pay for anything. I will use, I will go punch the clock to create active income to put it into an investment that will continuously pay me over and over and over again. Because like you said, when you go use active income to buy the car, now you got to use active income and you got to go to work to buy the next car. But if I use that money by an asset that will continuously print me money I can go buy a car when that car is, you know, dead, kaputs out of there. I still can get another car from the same avenue because I use my active income to pay for it and have it keep paying me perpetually uh, forever to keep generating that money. I don't have to go work for it again. It's just going to keep generating it over and over and over again. So that's a big part of my life is always finding ways for other people to pay for the things that I want. Yeah, I really, I really like this point. I have to be honest. I still invest my passive income. So mm -hmm. I haven't gotten to a point where it's so beyond where I can actually live off of it completely. Mm -hmm. I think things would be pretty tight if I try to live off of it. But the, act, the active income I make i i will admit i do use that to pay bills and then i do use that to invest and then that invested the the assets i have that create passive income i use that income to reinvest to build more but eventually i do want to switch that method once my passive income has um surpassed you know that amount i I believe that is the way to go. I believe living off of passive income is the way to go. But I think obviously for those starting, 
you're not going to have any passive income in the beginning, but you need to. And that's why we talk so much about cutting costs and cutting expenses, because you're going to need all the capital you can get to start building some assets, to start buying assets and creating that extra income and then continuing to reinvest that income and then eventually live off of that. But what he said is absolutely true. It's absolutely true. And people, they, I think I love the way he put it. Like they hate that they, the only way they can go do that again is they have to go back to work and get that same check by actively working. And obviously like you can ask Kirby, he loves his day job. All right. He gets about, works about 10 hours a week. And, uh, <laughs> but, but I mean, some people may hate their day job, but I think they really just hate the lifestyle that they have because they have to work at a day job. Like you hate that it consumes your time. You hate that you are obligated to go to this place. And that's, that's the biggest thing I think. So living, you know, eventually using that income correctly to buy assets is going to get you out of that rat race. But like Brian said, going to the liking, it's not it's not that they hate going. They hate the fact that after they go, all the work they put in, at the end of the month, they won't have nothing to show for it. What meaning nothing to show for, meaning money still left in the bank account. Right. So that's the reason why they hate it. Because if they was going, if they was la la going to work and let's say they brought in 10,000 a month and then all of their obligations were $5,000 a month and they kept $10,000 every month in their bank in their bank account, they will love it. They will love it. The part that they hate is they're going to do all of this stuff. They can't control their emotions. They can't control their finances. So at the end of the month, they're still going to be at zero, still struggling. They're still going to have more month at the end of their money. And that's the part that makes them hate it. You're always going to hear about them saying, oh, we need pay increase. We need a pay increase. They even start, they start using words like inflation and all this other stuff. Is all these things true? Yeah, but they're not going to change what they do, their spending habits to make their money go. So it don't matter how much money they make, they're still going to spend it. They can get more money and that's what jobs understand. We can give them more money, they're still going to complain about need more money because they're going to have life creep and they're just going to bring that value up. And that's the, that's the funny part of it is it's not stressful when you're not dependent on it. And to Alex, to your point, when I started off, it was just save and invest my money back, reinvest my money. Like most of my passive income, I still invest it because if it's not, let's say a necessity, if it's not, you know, food and all that stuff, then yeah, I, I reinvest the passive income. But when I started out, I didn't have, you know, my drip was small. So I was reinvesting, reinvesting, kept building on it, kept building on it, kept building on it. And then eventually you get to a point where it can cover, it can cover your life expenses and things like that. But that's a that's a stage and a process you got to get to. People want to get there overnight. They want it tomorrow, but they don't want to put the work in to get there. Like Warren Buffett, he'd been invested since he was 12 years old. He didn't become a billionaire until he was 60. He didn't get to a billionaire until he was 60. Let me say that again. Now, yeah, he's worth 100 billion now, but he didn't get to a billionaire until he was 60. But the key of that is Warren Buffett still lived. He only lived on... And that's, I mean, this is gross, not net. Warren Buffett still only received $100,000 in active income from his job. So all of his wealth is built on investing. So all that active income, he is putting it towards investing. Active income, putting it towards investing. Still to this day, Warren Buffett is worth over $100 billion. And the only active income he has coming in is $100,000 a year. And he builds back himself for his security detail. He builds back himself for phone usage and things like that. So his net is way less than that. So you don't need to make a million dollars. You don't need to make a hundred million dollars a year to become a millionaire or a billionaire. It's all about taking your active income and putting it in assets that will continue continuously appreciate over time and generate revenue. Because if you look at Warren Buffett's portfolio, everything that's in there, is good stocks that grow over time that generates cash flow. Just go up and down the portfolio. You you'll be hard pressed to find one stock in this portfolio that does not generate income. 
and one day we can go over it. But let's do a, I mean, I want to use this uh, quick exercise, Alex. And, and I was telling somebody this. So let's just use, I'm, I'm just going to call it stock ABC. Let's say stock ABC is, you know, trading at $10 a share, right? $10 a share, and then you have $1,000. And then let's say every month, every month just selling, selling cash secure puts, or selling cover calls on that same thousand dollars, the same ten dollars stock. Let's say it generates you one hundred and fifty dollars uh, worth of income off of that selling the options. So one hundred and fifty dollars could pay a light bill, a gas bill, water bill, cell phone bill. But let's just pick one. Let's use cell phone bill. So one hundred fifty dollars, you pay your cell phone bill every month off the same thousand dollars. Now that's so if you just do that every month, you're gonna generate one hundred and fifty dollars. Pay your cell phone bill from now to the end of time, right? But if you paid $150 per month times, let's say the next 25 years, that's $45,000. So that's how, that's really how simple it is. You can invest $1,000 now and sell cash secure puts and cover calls on $1,000 and generate that that cell phone bill payment every month, or you can just keep paying it and come up with $45,000. So do you rather pay, invest a thousand dollars to pay a cell phone bill? Or do you just want to keep using your active income to come up with $45,000? That's what, that's the difference between using other people's money and using your own active income to uh, establish and pay different aspects of your life. I like that analogy a lot. Yeah, that's a, yeah. That's good. With all that being said, though, guys, if you like this video, hit the like button, share this video, subscribe, uh, check out Brian Adamson's channel, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.